paralyzed by this fear of making decisions. I'm going to get it wrong somehow, and everything's going to blow up. People will be mad at me. Maybe worst of all, God will be mad at me. Somehow I'll, I'll end up living plan B for my life. Um, I, think, I think you want to, one of the things you, you have to keep doing is stepping back and asking yourself, how am I thinking about God? What is He like? What is, what is His nature? Because at that point, you're sort of thinking of God as, as sort of this really mean, grouchy person in the sky who's just, who's just a fault finder, who's just looking for reasons to punish you or curse you. But what, what the gospel, one way of thinking about what the gospel means is the gospel, the gospel is capable of overcoming sin and death. Now, if you think about it, that's, that's everything. There's nothing more, biblically speaking, realistically speaking, there's nothing more powerful than death. So if the gospel can overcome death, it can overcome anything, including your foolish decisions, including your weaknesses, including your limitations. God doesn't need your personal wisdom to make your life work out according to His plan and for His glory. That, that leaves lots of unanswered questions that will have to remain unanswered. How does God and how does God work His plan and coordinate it with my my true liberty and, and free will mixed up with all my sinfulness and depravity? I don't know. Nobody knows. But but what we do know is that God is bigger than all of that, and the Scripture promises us that He's able to work out everything according to His will and for our good and for his glory and that's that's our foundation that's that's what we what we rest in mm-hmm.